60 minutes. Rewind. Polo is called the sport of kings, and for centuries it's drawn royalty to its ranks. In the minds of many, the game has always belonged to the rich, the famous, and the privileged few. But there's more to the sport than the glamorous world that surrounds it. It began as a war game more than 2,000 years ago and is one of the oldest team sports in history. Most of us in America today know very little about it, but there was a time in this country in the 1920s and 30s when polo could draw a crowd of 30,000 spectators, and the U.S. was considered the best in the world. Today there are polo clubs all over the country, and this weekend the best international players are gathered at the U.S. Open Polo Championship in Florida, one of the most prestigious tournaments in the sport. Tonight we're going to introduce you to one of the game's stars, who's made it his mission to try to reignite America's passion for the game. It's fast, it's rough, and it's considered to be one of the most dangerous sports in the world. Is it a fight on the field? Are you going to war? It's war, yes. You're not trying to hurt anybody, but yes, you're trying to, to score more goals and to go faster and hit someone harder and do whatever it takes to, to, to win that game. 35-year-old Argentine Ignacio Figueres, known simply as Nacho, is the most famous professional polo player today. You may recognize him as the face of Ralph Lauren, that sultry look and international symbol for the polo brand. He's also the unrivaled ambassador for the sport. Everybody knows Nacho. 18,000 people showed up at this charity match he hosted on Governor's Island in New York City, where some of the VIP tables went for $50,000. Nacho is at ease among the glitz and glamour of the polo scene, the star attraction in that great Gatsby world of extravagant hats, seersucker suits, and elegant spectators sipping champagne. But where we saw his real passion was on the field. Polo it's, goes beyond where you are or beyond where people are wearing or beyond the hats, beyond the high heels, beyond all of those things. People think of polo and they think of those things first. All these things are happening around it, but what about what's happening inside? Inside, it takes blood, sweat, and hard work to play polo at Nacho's level. Nacho, 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 Nacho. These pictures were filmed at a thousand frames per second on a high-speed camera that we used to capture Nacho in action and the power and intensity of the game. Many people describe polo as hockey on horseback. Nacho told us it's more like playing golf in an earthquake. I've broken my nose twice. I have stitches here from like here to there. I've broken my, my wrist, I've broken my ankle. I've been unconscious twice from falling. It's a rough sport. You took a ball in the eye? Yeah, right here. <laughs> that explains the helmets and knee pads the players have to wear. Nacho didn't bother with any of that when he was a boy growing up on a farm in Argentina, obsessed with polo. I always say, if you're born in Hawaii, you'll surf. If you're born in Austria, you'll ski. If you're born in Argentina, you, most likely you'll play polo. What's the thing you're best at on the field? I'm tough. I'm, I'm not the most talented guy with the ball or playing. I run, I, kick, I hit people hard. I never give up. So you're determined? Oh, yes, determined. <laughs> determined to try to make polo in America as popular as it was 75 years ago when these pictures were filmed on Long Island. Back then, wealthy families like the Vanderbilts and the Whitneys dominated the game, and Hollywood stars like Spencer Tracy and Walt Disney were avid players. To understand how the game is played, we asked Nacho for a lesson. It's four against four. You play different uh, periods called chuckers. They're seven minutes long. Um, you have to score with a ball that is uh, this big. The object is to hit the ball through the opposing team's goal, and it all takes place on the largest field in sports, big enough to fit nine football fields. The rules are you have to use your right hand to play and control the horse with your left. 
The horses go as fast as 35 miles an hour and usually last about three and a half minutes before they have to be swapped out. Nacho has one of the best strings of polo ponies in the game. What are his strengths on the field? Stopping and turning. Amazing. These horses can stop on a dime. You can compare it with a, with a race car driving. So this is a Ferrari right here? This is a Ferrari right here that then also has to be tuned and, and, and feel great for the game. He told us nothing is more important than the horse, and he picks his carefully. This one is Cortina. I bought her two years ago from, from a very famous American polo player called Owen Reinhardt. Owen Reinhardt runs a world-class breeding and training operation on his 300-acre ranch in Aiken, South Carolina. In a game dominated by Argentines, this American was once one of the best in the world. What makes a good polo pony? Speed, agility, mental soundness, um, competitiveness. The really good ones are really competitive. Um, just like humans. Uh, just like humans. You can't overstate the importance of a polo pony uh, to the game. Unbelievable how important they are. Training starts from birth, and for these newborns, getting used to being around humans is the first lesson. That one's mother. Is, yeah. is a great horse, but she's mean. They're all descendants of great polo ponies, bred from champion stock. We want these to hopefully one day be in either the US Open, the British Open, or the Argentine Open. Those are the three biggest tournaments in the, in the world. These horses won't be ready for professional polo until they're six or seven. Pretty old compared to a racehorse, which peaks at three or four. So he could turn out to be a champion polo horse? I believe he will be. Which would mean he'd be worth what? Up, I think that sort of the top end now is $200,000. Polo ponies don't spend long in the ring, but Owen told us this is a critical part of their training because it's here that he determines how sensitive their mouth is to the reins. It's all about pressure, and this is very light pressure, and you want a horse to have a light mouth. On the field, they get used to full contact and learn how to compete at top speed. The best polo ponies, like the ones bred here, can play for 10 years or longer. It's amazing to see her weave like that from side to side. Owen showed us what a champion horse can do. When she feels this, yeah. she goes that way. When she feels the reins on the other side, she goes the other way. It's all her, and it's literally that, or that. The story will continue after this. Professional players like Nacho travel with their best horses. He brought 13 of the 300 he told us he owns here to the Bridgehampton Polo Club on Long Island, where he was playing in a six-week tournament. His wife and children travel with him as much as they can. Professional polo keeps Nacho on the road seven months a year, competing in a series of international tournaments from Singapore to Spain. Polo at his level costs millions of dollars and is paid for by the ultra-rich, like Peter Brandt, who owns two polo clubs and his own team. Nacho spent years playing for him. So this is your polo field? Yes. I have one polo field here, and we have two across the road for the Greenwich Polo Club. We met him on his estate in Connecticut. He's what's known in polo as a patron. If the team runs at a deficit, he covers it. And if it runs at a profit, he keeps it. <laughs> That's what a patron is. Have you covered more deficits or, or kept some profits over well, the let's, years? <laughs> let's put it this way. As an investment advisor, I, I wouldn't advise you to to start playing polo to, to earn a living, I mean, uh, as, a, as a producer of a team. But in exchange for covering all the bills, the Patron gets to compete in the biggest tournaments alongside the pros. Peter Brandt! And few of them play as well as Peter Brandt, once the highest rated amateur in the US. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. There's another side to the sport that Nacho wanted us to see. He introduced us to a 19-year-old player from Philadelphia who he's mentored. 
Oh, Nacho is an amazing guy, uh, you know, very caring. Have you played a game with him? Yes, I have. I was fortunate enough to play uh, a couple of times with Nacho, uh, once against him, once with him. Uh, I'd much rather play with him than against him, so. <laughs> Take the minute. Kareem Rasa was named the best high school polo player in the nation last year. Over 40 high school teams across North America compete for a national title. <laughs> And Nacho sees Kareem's success as proof that polo can take root in the most unexpected places. Most kids grow up wanting to play basketball or football. There aren't many kids that grow up in America wanting to play polo. Did you ever imagine that that would be your life? I had no idea, but I'm glad that it is polo. I'm glad that polo has taken me far. I just love everything that it has brought to me. You know, all the opportunities just the way that it changed my life for the good. Kareem grew up in a rough part of West Philadelphia. And this is where a lot of uh, you know, bad stuff happened on this street. Drugs, violence, shootings, killings. Being around all that negative influence, it's easy to get pulled in. Just a five minute drive from here was his refuge. This barn at the Chamonix Equestrian Center where Philadelphia's mounted police once stabled their horses. Outside in. 17 years ago, a woman named Leslie Heiner started a program called Work to Ride. She came to see the sport of kings as her way to help give poor kids a chance. In exchange for mucking stalls and keeping up good grades, Leslie taught the kids how to play polo with donated horses and secondhand gear. For years, they didn't win a single match and they were not always welcomed in the wealthy white world of polo. And now you're high school champions for the country. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, it's, it took us a while to accomplish uh, that goal, but now we, you know, we can definitely walk around and say that we are uh, you know, national champions. Nacho Figueres. Kareem told us he hopes that one day he'll play professionally like Nacho. In the match on Governor's Island, we watched him lead his team to victory. Nacho turns it back. Hustling for the ball. Nacho forget us. Stealing back. possession. And charging down the field to score. Nacho playing the game the same way it's been played through the centuries. Nacho's in scoring possession. Hoping to excite new interest in this ancient sport. Nacho! Hey!